<laughs> sorry. Honey, as my father, I can't I'm, tell I'm you that. I'm sorry to make an example out of you. But how does that make you feel? Somebody right. goes, I'm sure oh, you're here because you, you love it. So like, good. you're I excited think. about the culture. You're not here so you look pretty, right? No, so, I like to dress up. Yeah, and be it's, cool and do, exactly. you know, exactly. you, you're passionate about the stuff that you like. It's not so that you look pretty for the dudes who are here. Yeah. No, I don't care about that. Uh, yeah. I, I don't yeah. care about that. Oh, yeah. like, I'm yeah. just here to be. Oh, I do, but you know. But, but the, the whole point was this this got out recently, and one of the women we were going to have on our panel here today, her name is Annie. Um, she's the co owner. Her and her husband own Eighth Dimension Comics out on Highway 6. Really cool store if you're looking for a comic store. Yeah. And uh, so she's part of a women who own comic book stores, women who work in comics, the Valkyries. And so what they did was they wrote and they expressed their displeasure about how terrible it was. I have to give you my money to get the product and you treat me like I'm nothing but an object. Mm -hmm. And so this was, they, it was pulled down and I'm assuming that someone will probably get reamed for it. But I mean, I don't want to feel like that's the only reason you're listening to me is because I have a pair of boobs. I mean, yeah. like, that's, I'm more than that. I mean, they're fantastic, don't get they're, me wrong. They're, they're fantastic. But, like, you know, but I'm more than that. And I'm, I'm more than just what I look like. You know, and it's very disappointing and very sad to be reduced to that. And see, and Kimberly, you know, you are you are literally uh -oh. all of our only friend, <laughs> all of our only friends, or whatever that has. And I'm gonna bring up something okay. very personal. Bring it. Um, can I? Sure, I'm good. Fine. Okay. Every year we have a birthday party for Kimberly. I have breast implants. For so friends. they have birthday parties. And we have boot, we have boot fest, and they turned yeah, 15 nice. this year, so we're having a kids get up. So, you know, oh, sorry. <laughs> all dressed in white. All dressed. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you. Do we go to the mall? But we, actually, we are. We are. <laughs> we might. Michelle, we're in the mall, yeah. We're discussing. Okay, we're discussing. But I mean, I had I've had people come up to me and go because whenever I see Kimberly, it's. Motorboat. We're very we're affectionate we're with very each close. other. We're, that's how we roll, you know. And it's not necessarily kosher with everyone. That doesn't float well with everyone else. From an outsider looking in, and goes, "What the hell are you doing?" You know, well, how would you objectify her like that? And how are you letting him do that? Right. You know, as a strong feminist a, woman. I think there's teeth down there. And B. You know. <laughs> oh my God. We're about to have to take shock off the panel. But, uh, but, uh, but, I mean, and at least part of it has to do with consent and how you view yourself. I am perfectly happy to dress up and look nice and be great, but that's for me. That's not for someone else to. I, I mean, if you enjoy it, that's fine, but don't be an asshole about it. But I, I think we're getting away from the geek. Yeah, yeah, we, we are. But we're, we're, uh, we're, 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 we'll, we'll bring it back in. We're but, bringing it back in. But what I wanted to say, basically on the looking good, as going back, I'm trying to reel it back from what you were talking about with Annie, you know, and the girls looking great and stuff like that. What I'd like to go on a little tangent about um, that's happened recently in current events is, did you know Thor is a girl now? Yes. yes. Did you know Captain America is now black? <laughs> I think that one I did not guess. Oh, and there are rumors yeah, that next Bond might be Spider-Man is a mulatto, like the president. Yeah, Green Lantern is the next Bond might be black. Whoa, 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 whoa. To be fair, what's his name? Is it Alan West? Green Lantern? The first one. No, no. He was the first one that was gay? No. You're thinking of, um, you're, you're getting me off topic. We're going to argue. Minutia. Um, <laughs> but no, there's one Green Lantern that's always been gay. Sorry, but he's in I'm like 52. Sure See, this is what can't have those things. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See what it is. We're joking. But, I mean, how many of y'all have heard that? That I knew everyone threw a fit about the whole Thor thing. Thor being a girl. Yeah. Now, I threw a small little fit and went, Marvel, you have a storm. What the hell? You know, <laughs> any, anybody else? No. Well, no. I'm not sure. I didn't get Mike, that. Oh. No, My I, gaming buddy said, okay, well then in the movies there has to be equal time for equal, because male Thor, he was walking around shirtless. <laughs> oh, so, God, I was like, What? Yeah, the no. Valkyries did that? Huh? No, no, no. Oh, no, well. I saw like, something from one of, the, one of the writers. He was Thor, like, Thor. If you really hate having a black Captain America and a woman Thor, you're going to really hate when their mixed lesbian daughter becomes Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. like he was like, keep, it's pretty much keep bitching and I'm going to do it. 
Yeah. I think I just fell out, but I'm trying to sit down. <laughs> the point is, is that, you know, all these types of things, whether it's a comic book or it's a video game or it's a TV show, you know, like Buffy or something like that. The whole point is, is that they have allowed us to look at these things from perspectives where it's not so confrontational, it's not so scary. And this is and this is where El Plenia comes into play, is that you, you bring in real world things, current events into, you know this fantasy world where you can relate to them there. Because again, nobody likes to deal with something head on. Well, nobody nobody wants ever to have likes to, to. Be, It's hard to deal yeah. with your privilege. It's hard and to it's, recognize. It's, and, and this is where I'm going to bring Fernie into this or whatever. It's easier to go retrospect or whatever, i.e. history teacher, you know, and look back on something and go, oh, well, we can learn from that and this and that. If you read in the comic book, you feel like, oh, this is a fantasy world. I've already gone through this. The storyline has already ended. I know how it's supposed to end. You know, I'm okay with that. You know, I have had time. I've had. I've had time to deal with that. You know, and you know, really I process it through. I think one of the interesting things, sort of like in just the geek community as a whole, is just that this transformation in the last ten years. We're having this con. We're having this panel. We're having this panel. We're having this conversation, and you know, when you know when. You know, when Pax was, you know, had some, you know, had some very Pax has had some issues. Some issues with with gender, a lot of issues with gender. Yeah, a lot of issues. And you know, I remember, you know, remember, you know, E three conventions when the booth babes were like the de facto, and that's right. that was pushed back against. Like, there's a wider conversation now that I think, you know, there's, you know, you ask, you know, what are we teaching our children? How do we deal with this? And I think at the end of the day, it's con it's gonna be constant pushing, having these conversations. Making people aware of the world they're they're interacting yeah. with. Yeah. Because I, you know, I've always said there's so many norms and mores that we get from just passive viewing of of culture. I once talked about how many of the perspectives of this generation come from the fact Disney Channel original movies, guys. They ruled our world and ruled the way that we think. Ashlyn's true. Um, now I hear a lot about like the gender roles and everything, but is there any uh, superheroes that have been popular or in any movies or games or anything that are gay or no like about the most about the most like, There's like six popular out. no I'm, I'm saying the most popular i don't want to say the most popular like superhero that you deal with that's actually an out homosexual would be north star from and he just got married uh x-man or whatever X -Men, which right, basically yes. he was on what flight alpha flight, alpha alpha flight. flight. thank you and I almost brought that costume this week. I really oh, did. Yeah. I mean, it's at the house. It really is. I brought the Green Lantern instead. I mean, I guess you don't really um, see that in, in like mainstream like Star Trek or anything. Yeah, I mean, no. The closest you know, they, they could... did a little bit in the Next Generation, but they didn't really address it. Where you had these races that had no gender. Yeah. And and so you kind of saw a little bit of that where. And, they didn't directly address it, but they did in a and, way. And where everybody was into everybody. The, yeah. Then there's yes. the then there's the situation where like you know John Delancey explicitly played Q as gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Explicitly. I did not know that. No, he, he he discussed how he like he played him meant to be gay. Yeah. And so that's what. I mean, but it wasn't just a flamboyant crazy person. No, no, he was yeah. doing it on purpose, playing yeah. playing the role that it did the role. Uh, but, um, <laughs> which <laughs> clearly we all want to go now. We want to go home and read our. Uh, Captain Picard Q fan fiction. <laughs> I'm still not convinced on that man. Um, yeah. Yeah. When he hangs yeah. out with uh, Here, here's, I know. here's a bad example because this is going to be one of those things where it's like you're going to either be a fan of one or the other. If you've ever watched the movie watch The Watchmen that they made yeah. based on the comic, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was really sad because if you look at the opening credits, and I can't think of her name for the life of me. The home chick that her mother was. No, the girl. one. No, the one in the solid black outfit she was one of the original watchmen it's like her and the comedian all that oh yeah yeah well yeah, yeah. No, her mother that's what i'm talking about no silk no. spectres silk spectres <laughs> No, 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 no. No, no. The, not the one that's all in black with Spider the bob caught. The one oh, that looks like the, a dominatrix. the executioner. Those yes. guys. Yeah, I yeah. forgot who you were talking if you about. Look yeah. in the, if you look in the opening sequence yeah. where they have like the times are changing and stuff, and they did use clips from history, like the famous she picture did. that's on Time yeah. magazine of the sailor kissing the nurse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They swapped it out with this girl kissing the nurse. And what's really sad, if you watch the opening, somebody kills them because they're lesbian. Yeah. yeah. And they were photographed kissing in public. Yeah, it's like I know something in, in comics that I didn't I didn't read it in the comics, but I've I've read about it around is Anol. He's an X Men, and he realizes he's gay and he attempts to kill himself. And it hit really close. I was like, whoa, that's 
that's yeah. really crazy. You, and one of the other X-Men comes over and is like, dude, I'm gay too. It's, it's cool. Yeah. And they kind of talk well, it out. Let's get out. Let's <laughs> You're horrible. Let's <laughs> that party. But I mean, no. And another topic that they, they've not really even really jumped on at all, you know, within um, the geek community is about transgenders. Exactly. You know, and, you know, to me, and this is my own little suspicion, is Mystique is supposed to be transgender because mm -hmm. she. Can be anybody. Metaphor. She can be anybody. She can be anything, she she can be anybody yeah. anything that she wants to be or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, where are you supposed to be? Where do you fit in? You know, yeah. it, it ends up being that question. You're still in blue. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you don't fit in. You know, you can look like so and so or whatever, but you're really just blue. And I do love that song. I'm all talking about my favorite. Because um, no, it's true. Because you always see her with Magneto, and they imply that they're together, but they never imply that they do anything together, yeah. other than the fact that she's basically his female partner she's in crime. She's in love with Domino. I mean, they had like a thing. The the girl with the white face with the black dot, the one that right. you can, she can turn luck into her favor. I just think I mean all these issues. I mean, you know, I remember. You know the big deal when Fable Two allowed you know when Fable allowed mm -hmm. you to marry men in the game, yeah. Um, yeah. which is adorable in there. And also, what was it? What was it was the recent thing with Nintendo? Is that the one? Recent? No, he's thinking about Nintendo. 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 Yeah, Tamagotchi Life. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they, they get don't married. Tamagotchi Life. Yeah. Appar yeah. Apparently, yeah. apparently there's a, if you want to have a rustic lifestyle where you live with someone, it has to be a man and a woman. Anything else, guys? Guy, men, we're screwed. Ladies, mm, we're all just supposed to be met together. Happily ever after with many, many babies. <laughs> you know, and it's it's small little bitty things like that that people think, well, why is that important? Or why why would you want to live out your life like that? It's game. You know, it's not important. It's every little thing is important. It's everything you see. You know, every it's real day. to what you're it, looking at, playing through that sort of thing. That's why. You and whatever have these aspects. Yeah, and whatever people play a fantasy game, you know. You're living your life through that. You like, you know, you're living at least part yeah, of your we're life. We're gonna be able to get married anytime soon in Texas, so <laughs> yeah, we don't exactly. be in a purple state I can, sooner than you think. I can go to yeah. Skyrim and get married in damn well. Yeah. yeah. What, what's I do have to take back seeing my dad in like the last episode. I'm sorry, I'm really getting in the last episode. Oh, I didn't see Zena. Oh, where she, she, she like she basically makes up with Gabrielle. Yeah. She loved the Asian chick. I don't know her. Oh, I don't know. I just I assumed it was Gabrielle. It. She has a lesbian face. But like in the um, final, <laughs> final episode, like, yeah, she... Oh, that was she, a big fan base. It, it's admitted well, that she loves yeah. Gabrielle and that she had this past relationship that, right. yeah. What's, what's it was one? always implied through the home, Xena. Well, yeah, Gabrielle, always, always yeah. And we like seeing things explicit because it, it matters, you know, we have this, you know, I'm a big sports fan, yes, I know. Sports ball! Sports ball! Gay man that hangs out, that hangs out with geeks, I'm always by myself in my love of sports. <laughs> um, but you know, we have the, the similar discussion in the sports world, you know, people are like, why does it matter if you talk about race, or I'm just trying to watch a game. And it's just like, why it means nothing to me. Guy. No, yeah. it, it means everything to you, you know, and all encompassing this back to the whole hero ordinance, you know, I, I ran into a whole lot of people and I, I really felt close to this issue because to me it dealt with race, you know, it was a bill that was basically a or ordinance, not a bill, uh, that dealt with equal rights for everybody, for pregnant people, for, you know, black people, white people, Hispanics, LGBT, transgender, whoever, it protects everybody, you know, within the workforce, you know, and me owning, well, running an LGBT organization like I do, which five years running, I'm extremely proud of. You know, we started with about 30 plus members or whatever, and we're now at 1,587. And we have me, you know, so clearly we've done earlier. something. We're at 90, we're 1,590, you know, and they're all local, you know, because I do boot people off that page or whatever. <laughs> I know, I really do. I, I, it is, it, we, I, oh, it's got nothing stop. else. Anyways, <laughs> you're like, stop. Oh my God, go. But what really hit home to me is, hey, whenever it comes to the workforce and stuff like that, I don't want to talk about gamers. I'm going to break it up. 1591. Huh? 1591. No, we got one more today. And she's fact-checking me. This is why I like her. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't talk about gamers in the workforce because I know Texas is an at-will state. And be like, um, how am um, I, mean, I don't work for you, you know, or I don't put it like on my LinkedIn or my resume or anywhere online, you know, it's like how this whole organization I've
help build up, you know, can't talk about, or whatever. I, I can't have other people talking about, you know, and it's, it's all about a diversity thing, but even whenever Hero came along, I was like, I want to be a part of this because it's not just that. <coughs> Personally, as a mixed breed person in the first place, you know, I never find solace anywhere. I'm always in the middle gray zone. You know, you know, this half black, half white, you know, mulatto, my president's a mulatto. Hey, uh, why are you playing? No, I was in charge. Oh, but yeah. You know, I've been lucky that I've managed, you know, I work for Yes Prep Public Schools, which has an explicitly in my contract yeah. a non-employment discrimination agreement to cover sexual orientation. So I'm one of the few people blessed in this state that I can't get fired for being gay. I mean, this is meant. So I know I have a gay pride flag in my classroom. Uh, I tell my kids I have, I belong, and like it's sad, right? Like that, you know. So you know, I've come into Houston Gay in the last two years. I get to talk more about it than the guy that was there at the founding, and that's tragic. But I've been lucky, and that's not the case for everyone. And so I'm really no. glad that we've no. in a situation because. I mean, it's about representation just in the world. Right? And Which is why, because I'm straight, personally, but this is why I... Personally. Tried to, personally. <laughs> Publicly. But, but, <laughs> well, there was that one time at band camp. <laughs> 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 I, I, I wasn't marching up. band, I wasn't marching band. But, you know, but that's why I tried, I, cause I'm not going to get fired, but I'm like, I am a proud member of the Houston Gamers. My friends are gay, my friends are transgender, my friends are bisexual, and they deserve just as much protection and just as much equality as I do. Why is it any different just because I happen to get born straight? Like, that's yeah. that's not fair. And so I try to use my voice to make it better and make it more accepting. And, you know, like, I was, my dad is a little bit old school, you know. And when I was first like, oh, I'm like co-founding a gay gaming group. And my dad was like, oh, that's awesome. And, you know, gave us and food I gave for the food drives. And he's not going to get great kids. So, uh, but, you know, gave us food for the food drive. And, yeah, and it was something that, because it's becoming more accepted, that people who might not have thought this way 20 years ago, like mm -hmm. now it's not such a big deal. But, so, and that's because gay people aren't scary. I know I, you know, it's not. And the more people that you know, and the more people that you, I know, right? And the more people that you know, and that was a quote from a, an interview I gave last year. But the more people that you know, and the more people that you're able to interact with from different cultures, from different lifestyles, you realize that we are all just people. We all want the exact same things. We don't want anything different from anyone else. And no one should not be able to get that just because of who they are. And Michael, so what do you, with um, El Plandio, what is, what is your biggest purpose of you pushing that forward? You know, what, what's the biggest message you're trying to push across? Because we're talking about gamers and how we want to push that across, like why we use that as a intermediary. In terms yeah. of sexual orientation, or, or no, or not even just that, in, just in general. In, ge in general, uh, I think it's important because, uh, again, we're taking representations of this world into the Elflandia world, so uh, we want to make sure that uh, the writing, the stories, is something that people can connect with mm -hmm. so that they can.